Hey, welcome in another episode in the mini series of Harmonious at Lunch, Scale Without Sacrifice. The last episode, the first episode really of this mini series was all about the four Ds. If you remember, if, well, if you didn't catch it, first of all, go back and watch it. But the four Ds simply are the filtration method of how we handle opportunities and challenges that come our way in business. So it was do, delay, delegate, delete, not in that order, actually in the opposite order. Again, if you missed it, go back and watch episode one. But did you take notes on that? Was it helpful? Have you heard that before? Let me know in the comments what you thought about the four Ds. And if you've already started to use it, if you started to see things that come up in business, in your business, a little bit differently. Now, today, I want to dive in a little bit deeper. One of the things that always comes up when I talk to people about scaling their business is this underlying fear. And really, the fear is about, you know, what are they going to have to sacrifice when they grow their company? They think it's going to cost them more time, more money, more energy, more team members, whatever it may be. There's some underlying level of fear that something will have to give. And I'm here to argue that it's quite the opposite. You can actually gain from scaling your company. And it does not have to be difficult. It doesn't have to be complex. I think there's a lot of people, well, I don't, I don't think, I know, I've seen it. I know there's a lot of people on the internet, the, the gurus, if you will, and you've seen me call them out before on this show, on my social media where you know they tell you it's they have the one solution to grow your business and it's all you'll ever need to grow your business and all they really talk about is one little niche inside of one of the 10 disciplines of business the harmonious architecture you see above me on the screen harmonious is an acronym it's the 10 fundamental business disciplines that every business needs to master in order to scale this has come from our years working with the Fortune 50, some of the biggest companies in the world, and now small businesses and entrepreneurs, to solo solopreneurs, and everything in between. We know for a fact that these disciplines are in place, and when they're maximized and the leverage between them, excuse me, the links between them are leveraged, that is when businesses are successful and scalable. When they're absent or you don't have a focus on all 10 of them, that's when growth is hard. That's when it's expensive. That's when you do have to sacrifice and things don't work. But that's also why small businesses fail. You know the failure rates of small businesses. I've said them on this podcast. I'm not going to go through them again. But the moral of the story is they're true for a reason. But we can flip that script for your business and we can turn that around. You can scale and run an efficient, thriving business without the sacrifice. So today's episode, I'm going to try to keep this as concise as possible is really about the fear of neglecting yourself or neglecting something else while you're scare, scaling your business. So if you want to scale your business, you want to grow it this year, and you want to have aggressive growth this year, I support you, and I love that, and I want to help you get there. But there's some things that we need to be aware of while we're on this journey. So one of the things that, um, again, in, in terms of what are we going to sacrifice to get there, one of the things that always comes up is processes. And then another thing that comes up is calendar. So we'll touch on those two a little bit today and just understand that everything I say here, we can go a lot deeper on. That's the whole point of the 10 disciplines. The architecture is that any anything we say has a place and we want you to know what we're talking about and where, where it goes in the architecture, but we can go a whole lot deeper. So just know that before we dive in. This is surface level to get you started, and then you'll have to do the work and go deeper yourself. Um, or, of course, you can come work with us too and come hang out in the inner circle. We'll do it with you, and we'll grow your business together. So we're going to talk about uh, your processes, streamlined process for growth, and then we're going to talk about what this looks like on your calendar and tie it all to uh, the four Ds that we talked about yesterday. So streamlining your processes. This is super important if you're going to scale. I think a lot of people want to scale before they really want to put things, put procedures in place and processes and SOPs. And, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of SOPs and processes. If, as a fractional COO, I, you know, I, I wouldn't have that uh, position without it. But it doesn't have to be super complicated. I think where a lot of people get hung up is they think they have to have extensive training manuals and documentation on how to do everything, every step of, of every process in their business. 
And you really don't. What what you need to do if you're going to scale, and it depends on what level you're at. If you're a solopreneur trying to grow a small team, um, or if you're even a, even if you have a small team and you're trying to add a few more employees, you just need to make sure every process that's really important for your growth is documented to the degree that to, that you can hand it off, and be comfortable that somebody else could get it done. It's kind of like the the caveman test, right? If you can, if you have a process documented and you can give it to anybody in your organization and it can be followed, then that means if we reference yesterday, it's immediately now below the golden line. It is not something you need to do uniquely yourself. That's the goal to get everything that you are doing beneath the golden line. You can still do them in the short term, especially if you don't have the staff to do it. You don't have the means to delegate right now but document it so that immediately when it is time to delegate or push that to somebody else or hire for that role, that you can do that. And it's not then onboarding someone and document documenting all of your processes. So I'll give you a little tip on this. One of the systems that I've, or the, the way I used this in my last business was I called them playbooks. And really all I've done is, and I, I actually made, a, I had a podcast about this um, a few episodes ago, if you want to go back and reference that. I'll put it in the show notes of what episode that was. But all I did was I had a master Google sheet that was accessible to everybody in my company. And on that sheet was uh, four columns. So the column all the way to the left was a number. So it was a playbook number or handbook number, whatever you want to call it. The middle column or the second column was the title of that playbook. So how to whatever, how to change the toilet paper in the bathroom stall. Um, you'd be surprised. A lot of people need to help figuring that out. So that that may be a playbook in your company. Uh, column three was the department that it applied to. And then column four was optional. And that would be a subcategory if needed. So if you wanted to name a specific software tool, let's say uh, I'm, I'm filming this right now on StreamYard. If we had 15 videos on StreamYard and I wanted to easily filter all of those videos or all of those tasks, I would put a subcategory that was StreamYard just so I could filter all of them at the same time. So that one was optional, but the first three columns were mandatory and that's how we kept everything organized. Then when you clicked on any one of those rows, the playbooks, it would bring you into a Google Doc. On that Google Doc, we would have step-by-step -step instructions with some final checks, any tools and resources associated with that process would be linked in the doc. And then it would be a process, we would have a process video as well. So this process video was either shot with your phone, if you're walking around the place and you wanted to take a video of something, of how you would do the process, or we would use a Loom video or a screen share video and just go through step-by-step -step on the screen, um, recording yourself talking through the process like you were training somebody, but obviously uploading it to the Loom video. That's all. I didn't have some fancy SOP documents. There was no HR software that I had to follow to the letter of how to do this. It didn't cost me an arm and a leg to have this stuff set up. And it really didn't take any time. And the best part was, as I scaled my company, this was outsourced and this became part of everybody's role. So if you owned a role or a, a function within the company, you were responsible for that playbook and creating all of the playbooks that went with it. So as I hired people, I started to naturally delegate the playbook creation to the people in those roles because they were the experts and you can do that too. So if you have a team of 40 people and you need to, and you're like, we don't have any processes documented. It's just, it's just out there. How am I supposed to document 3000 processes? You don't, you have the people in place. You just have to do the ones that only you are currently responsible for doing and everybody else will do theirs. You set up the format, the template, the style, everything, and then they compile their documents and their processes within your overall master document. So it does not have to be complex. You just have to get it down and you have to get a system that works for you and is scalable. I love the Google Doc to Google Sheet method, and we hosted our videos on YouTube on a private unlisted YouTube channel so that all of our screen shares and everything was easily accessible and searchable, and it was private in our in our company Google Drive folder. So it was really easy for everybody to just, as soon as they were onboarded, that was part of the thing was to go watch these first three videos, understand how to use this system. And then really the onboarding was, was a breeze because we just got to tell them, we got to in, indoctrinate them in the culture, not necessarily teach them how to do their job and their day-to-day -day roles. 
because that was all what the playbooks were for. So that's a whole different topic on onboarding and hiring. But as far as process management and being scalable and scaling without the sacrifice, make sure before you scale, you have things, I say on paper, in quotes, you have things down in some sort of an operating manual, SOPs, whatever you want to call it, the playbook system, you have it documented. That's going to help you scale very quickly. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be how you're doing it now so that when you scale and you delegate that task or you offload that task to another role, they own it. And then they are responsible for updating it and owning the results of that task. I can't tell you how much time that saved me when I was in, in scale mode, growth mode in my last company. If I had to teach people how to do the jobs and then monitor their performance over and over and over, I would have pulled my hair out. And that's what most small business owners do because they don't understand that a simple documentation method can save a ton of headaches, which leads me to the next process or part of the process, which would be effective delegation. So, so far, streamlined processes. Again, let's not worry so much about the efficiency. It's just the documentation of the process. We'll get to efficiency later, but effective delegation, this is where you're, you're building a strong team. You're identifying people's strengths and you're empowering ownership. Empowering ownership is the key. And that's kind of what I touched on in the process part. In order to delegate effectively, A, you need a documented process, but really you need to assign ownership of the outcome. It You can't just say you're, you're a widget maker and you need to put this part on this widget and then it goes out the door. That is not at all going to get the job done and you're not going to retain employees very well either. Effective delegation is about assigning ownership to an outcome so that you're you're giving that person autonomy in their role, meaning they have the power over the outcome. They have the power over how it gets done, the process. If you assign tasks to people and you can say, this is how we currently do it, but I'm empowering you to find a better way, find a quicker way, find a cheaper way, and you incentivize it, whether it's with bonuses or time off or free candy bars in the break room, whatever it is, when you delegate, if you have a clear process documented and then you delegate ownership, not just the task, you're now empowering your workforce to go above and beyond and be a part of the solution and not just widget makers all day long. I think that's really, really key. And again, another area where a lot of small businesses just happen to get it wrong, unfortunately. Now, when you're talking about an overall system and you're growing a company, you need an overall system that is scalable. So that's really where the harmonious architecture is going to come into play. We've talked about streamlined processes and effective delegation. So delegation goes back to the conversation yesterday with the four Ds, which ultimately resides in the S of harmonious. And that is serenity, which is your old way of looking at it, it would be time management. We know we can't manage time, right? But we can have serenity. And that's what we're all after as business owners. What is the, the calendar that we want to look at, the perfect calendar in our minds? whatever it is. If it's working 60 hours a week, that lights you up. You love it. You're like Elon Musk, like fantastic. If that's serenity, let's get you there. But let's make sure it's the most effective 60 hours, not just 60 hours of busy work. If it's two hours a week, let's also get you there and make sure those two hours are wildly productive. But the 40s can help get you there. And that is serenity. When we talk about processes, that's one of the O's in Harmonious. And it's the one that stands for order. The other O is operate. That's what we're doing and how we're doing it. Um, the Excuse me, that's what we're doing it and what we're chasing with our objectives. Order is really about the processes, how we get things done. So when you look at the overall system, you need to make sure your company is scalable. You need to make sure that as you add revenue, as you add people, as you add clients, orders, POs, whatever it may be, can your business handle that stress? What are the points down the line where your system would break? Do you, Have you thought about that? That's one of the things that really comes up to bite people when they're scaling is let's just use round numbers. Let's say you're doing $100,000 of revenue in your business now or a million, whatever, whatever mark you're at, just add a zero to the numbers if you need to. But $100,000 in revenue. What would happen if you did $100,000 last year and $500,000 this year? That's a 5x growth margin or, or growth multiple. What if you did a million dollars? That's 10x. 
What if you did 2 million? That's 20X. Where would your systems that you currently have in place break down? Let's try to think about that in advance as much as possible and say, okay, if we did a million dollars in business last year and we did, okay, we had some capacity to grow. Try to put a percentage of growth on your business of where you would not break it, like right at that edge. If it's 20%, so from 1 million to 1.2 million, you'd be okay doing the exact same thing. Okay, that's our new benchmark where we need to get you past. So then let's let's project at 2 million. What would it take your business as it stands to do $2 million? What are the systems that would break down, the processes, which, which letters in the harmonious acronym would break down and, and in what order? Could you see that coming? I can, and I'll tell you about that in just a minute, but put yourself in that position and say, okay, if we were to do twice the amount of business, just if we're, if we're looking at this from the outside and we're trying to keep it simple, 1 million to 2 million, 5 million to 10 million, 10 to 20, whatever it is, if you're going to do twice the amount of business and change nothing else, what would break first? If you don't hire a single new employee, if you don't bring on any new software tools, if you don't change anything with your advertising, whatever whatever would break first in your mind, we need to probably fix that first. But I'm going to say pause. So before you start coming up with fixes and remedies to problems that don't even exist yet, that would exist if you were to grow your company, just list them out, the things that would be your biggest concern if you were to grow your company by a significant margin. We can get you to grow quickly, but it doesn't really help to grow quickly if you're just going to have to pause every three months and revamp your entire business. There's a way to do this effectively so that you can make some small adjustments up front so that you really have no limit to scaling because things take care of themselves as you grow and you know what problems are going to come up before they happen. That's the fun tool I have for you at the end of this episode that I'll share in just a second. We're almost done here. Um, so what are we going to do? We have we have these different things that we're paying attention to. We, we have to pay attention to processes, delegation. We have to make sure the whole system is scalable. We're going to get there in a second. And then we need to focus, of course, on the, the core priorities. So the core priorities is this is where we're going to leverage the 80-20 rule. I, I've run into a lot of businesses where they want to be all things to all people. And let's use the uh, the doctor's office analogy. So this is a really simple one. Think about your general physician. Hopefully you have one. If you don't, maybe you should go for a checkup, but that's besides the point. So if you go to your general physician and they say, um, it kind of looks like your heart is failing and we need to do emergency heart surgery and we need to do it tomorrow. Would you be comfortable with your general physician performing open heart surgery on you? Probably not. You would, you would maybe want to consult a heart specialist, a heart surgeon, a cardiologist on that particular issue. You want to go to someone who specializes in that area. Well, when we bring this to the business world, what we see a lot of times is people just tacking on services and products and all these different things. And their business ultimately ends up looking like this giant Frankenstein-like monster where nothing really makes sense. You're, you're doing... You know, you're selling physical products over here, and then you're selling web design services over there, and then you also sell Sean, my business partner's favorite favorite example. You sell surfboards to cats because you saw there was there may be a market for surfboards for cats, and you said, "Hey, let me just sell that product," not realizing that all of this these different product lines and service lines take your attention away from your core. So you need to leverage the eighty twenty rule. Figure out what are your core products and services and focus on them. We're going to focus there first. That might mean killing other product lines. And this is where a CFO or an accountant, a CPA would probably come in handy if you don't have one already. If you'd like, we can make a recommendation to a fractional CFO to help you understand your metrics here. But go go line by line on your um, in your financial data and figure out what products and services am I making money on, losing money on, or maybe just breaking even on and separate them into those three categories. Then we're going to figure out, okay, if you're making money on them, awesome. How can we make the same with doing less work or make more money or at least continue making the same margin without hurting the business or hurting our customers? 
Then you want to look at the ones where you're maybe not, you're breaking even, you're making a little bit of money, not, not a whole lot, but it's not killing the business. Maybe we can keep those, maybe not. If there's any products and services that you are losing money on, we would probably want to just kill those off immediately and then focus our efforts elsewhere. If you have, and you probably do, because that's what the 80-20 rule stands for, you probably have 20% of your services or products that are making 80% of your revenue. Now, I ran this actual report in my last business that I mentioned earlier, and like clockwork, every single year, every quarter, every month, every whatever period I measured, the 80-20 rule was true. 20% of my services rendered 80% of my revenue and profit. That's a huge distinction. So basically, if I killed off 80% of what I offered, my business would grow in terms of profitability because the expenses associated with those 80%, with that 80% of revenue would be no longer. So I would be making so much more profit. And in year three, four, five of that business, I did exactly that. And I pared down my offerings drastically and I made way more money. And I was able to sell that business for a significantly higher multiple than is standard in that industry because I realized, hey, if I just focus on this small section of income of revenue, my profits are going to go through the roof. And I don't need this huge team behind me to, to run this business. I had a small team. We made a ton of money. We were really effective and really good at what we did because we focused on that small little portion that we knew would get us the biggest results. So that's what I'm going to offer you to do on your focusing on your core priorities. Definitely make sure you have an optimized product offering. You want to have different options for your customers, but don't go crazy. Don't offer a million different things and try to be everything to everybody. Focus on what you're really good at, what you're making money at, and drive forward on that. I promise you, you will make more money, probably more revenue, but definitely more profit. And we'll get the revenue up long term when we can have the when we then have the resources to grow in a systematic way. So yesterday we we talked about your uh, the 4D mix. Hopefully you started to implement that um, from episode one, and you understand some time management, uh, you know, prioritization, if you will. You understand what is going to get on your calendar. What are the things that you're doing? What are the things you're delaying, deleting, and delegating? Now we know how to delegate, right? We have processes in place. And then we know what we're actually doing because we have our core products and, and services that we're focusing on. So where does this all come down to? Um, I gave you kind of the real life example of how this looks when in my past business, when you're when you're growing, your things are maybe getting out of hand and you're starting to feel stressed. You don't know what parts of the businesses business is working, not working. You have to dive deep to the numbers to understand what products are making you money, what's losing you money. But also something you can't really tell from looking at those numbers is what part of the business, the the disciplines up here in Harmonious, what which part of which one of those 10 disciplines are you really lacking in or are most of your problems stemming from? Now that's what I wanted to share with you earlier. I'm gonna put this website on the screen. And I'm going to encourage you to go take this um, this assessment. It's called the Bad Assessment Business Architecture Diagnostic. Harmonious is the business architecture, of course, that we're referencing here. It's at whatif.com. And what's going to happen here is this is a free tool. We have charged uh, over $2,500 per engagement to use this tool with our Fortune 50 clients. Um, and we we found a way to get it to you free by offering it in an eight-minute assessment. It is 50 questions. It's just a scale of how you're doing. It's number based and you'll be able to go through section by section. And from the results, you'll get a report on the backside that will tell you exactly where your business needs the most help right now to make sure you don't fall in the trap that comes with scaling traditionally. This is where I said a few minutes ago, we can actually predict where things will fail. This assessment is why. We go through this, we use this with our clients, and we use it on an ongoing basis. We take it every three months. When we're when we're planning the next quarter out with our clients, we make sure they go through this first, and then we can plan effectively. So as you're scaling, as you're getting ready to scale, I want you to take this assessment. Go to whatif.com. You'll you'll fill out the quick, you know, name and email, and it'll, it'll redirect you to the website to take the actual assessment. Then you'll get your results within 24 hours of taking it after all the results are compiled. And we can see exactly what will break first, how it will break, but more importantly, the results on the back end, the PDF that you get with it, will tell you how to fix it. You don't even need our help to fix it. That's the best part. I would love to help you. I'd love to sit down and break the break down the results with you to help you figure out exactly how to scale your company. 
If you want to take us up on that offer, please, there will be a way to contact us after you take the assessment. And we're more than welcome to walk you through that or even have you on a couple of our inner circle workshop calls to ask your questions, clarify the results and see exactly how you can scale your business effectively. But just know this, if you take that assessment, everything we've talked about yesterday and today or episode one and episode two, you won't have to worry about scaling your business. There will be no sacrifice to scaling your business. It's going to be very simple because we can call out ahead of time what will break, how it will break, and how you could fix it without having to break it first. That is immensely powerful when you're looking to scale your company. However much you're, you're looking to scale, if you want to grow 20%, awesome. If you want to grow 2,000%, also awesome. Let's just get ahead of the growth and make sure there's no slowdowns along the way. We want consistent growth and we do not want hiccups. That's our whole goal when we work with our clients. And we achieve that with all of our clients. That's the point of using the architecture, leveraging the links, and using this assessment. So go to whatif.com, take that assessment. Um, I've obviously done a terrible job at keeping this episode under 20 minutes, but that's okay. Hopefully you've listened to it on uh, a, a little bit sped up. But tomorrow, episode three, we're going to talk about, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about marketing and how you're going to talk about your business or your offers in that regard. And I want to offer you um, maybe a little bit more of an outside the box technique or a way to look at your marketing and how to tie it back into the architecture and what other parts of the architecture marketing touches. Now, here's the other disruptive statement for you. Marketing and sales are the same thing. If you're looking at them differently, let's already shake that up for you. And just so you understand, coming into tomorrow, those are the same. If you're looking at them differently, the model's already broken, but let's leverage how we can make that work together for your business to grow effectively and that will get you through the Scale Without Sacrifice three-part mini-series. I'm excited that you were joining me on this one. Um, welcome in, and I can't wait for episode two. So remember, go to whatif.com, take that assessment. You'll get your, your results probably before episode three drops, and we'll see you on that.